Hi, hi guys. Uh, welcome. I'm just jumping in. I'm a little bit early. It is 9.29, but I'm jumping in today. I'm Sally Galvin and um, I'll just wait for a couple of you guys to jump in. I'm really excited to be here today and I'm uh, really proud of... Hi guys, how you doing? Hi Alyssa, how you doing? I'm really, really... Um, it, Feel, I feel very privileged to be asked by the Happiness Aid to come in and speak within this group because I love this group. I've been following you guys for a bit now and I love the people in here. Like we're all like-minded people wanting to make a difference in our own world, in our families' wor worlds and, um, and then in the broader community. So I am Sally Galvin. I live in Perth, WA. And I am, I'll just give you a quick introduction to who I am. It's half past nine now, so there we are, we're on now, which is cool. Thanks for joining us, Alyssa. Good, good to see you, mate. I am, a little bit about me, really, so you know who I am and what I stand for, is I am a, an Australian representative. I am a mother of four boys. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I love business, and I'll get into that in a bit. And I am an ambassador for mental health awareness. And I love business because it has given me the opportunity to make such a difference in thousands and thousands of people's lives. In fact, globally now because of Facebook and Instagram and in the internet. Um, and business allows you to do that. So I own multiple businesses and they all are in, within the mental health awareness space. So um, my original one is I ride horses and I'm an equestrian. That's how, where I've represented Australia in equestrian. And so uh, Jared Isle Equestrian is pretty cool. That um, That is my was my main business, but it's actually been just about shut with COVID-19, I tell you. Uh, but then my real passion actually has been uh, creating grounded, resilient, well-adjusted children. And as a mother of four boys myself, I have understood the importance of it. You know, like um, my story, just in a really quick nutshell, is my father passed away. He took his life when I was eight and my younger sisters were four, two and seven months old. So my perfect... Um, rural upbringing was, you know, like we lived on a sheep and wheat farm out in the wheat belt and we had the most idyllic life until it wasn't. And it was when the interest rates went right up and the pressure just got to dad and I was really angry for a long time. And then I realised that, well, mum's mum was big into sports and big into encouraging us to be sporty and she uh, got us into, well, we all started with horses. She mum didn't know one end of the other. and. Mum encouraged us to do the best that we can in everything we do. And so all four of us have gone on to represent Australia. But in doing that, I realised the power of the mind because I realised at elite sports, the, um, the game is won or lost between the mind and the mindset. So I have then gone on to become, hi, how you doing? How you doing, Rihanna? Nice to see you. I'm just giving a quick nutshell on who I am and my history and why I'm into... Um, mind fitness, it's a play on words and it's a word I've sort of made up um, because, yeah, because of my, my history, my, I've, there's been suicide roped in and out of my history. My main one was my father passed away when I was a little girl. He took his life when I was eight. And then I went on to um, play sport at a really high, Shelly, how you doing? A really high level and I realised the power of the mind. And so I have been all over the world, I'm 41 now, yeah? I have been all over the world, four continents, traveling and teaching and learning about the mind, to be honest. It's really been a huge interest of mine. And what I've come to is if I can help to create grounded, resilient, well-adjusted children, reach their full potential, then they will grow up to become grounded, resilient, well-adjusted adults, and they will parent that same way. And the ripple effect just blows my mind. And so that's what gets me up in the morning. Hi, you guys, jumping on. Hi, Delina. Hi, Rianda, Shelley, Rianda. There's two of you. Hi, sorry, same person. <laughs> and 
Elisa, hi, how are you going? Yeah, it's the same person. It's pretty cool the way we can do this now, isn't it? Like, it's really cool. So, right, shall I get started? I am, I could talk underwater about this. So I've got myself set up with some, um, you know, sheets because I'm wanting to, you know, stay on track because I could really talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. I love to talk, I talk fast. And I, um, and just because I'm so passionate about this, right? I, uh, I've done a bucket load of research and I have had hand one-on-one, -on -one, um, you know, everything I teach, I do already and I'm getting results, not only with my children, but with lots of people's children. So Jared Old Mind Fitness is the next business that I run and this is really my favorite because it is, Jared Isle's where we live and that's the company that I've got and I've got a few businesses underneath it, but Jared Isle Mind Fitness, particularly for kids, but also for parents as well, helps to, um, well, teach, the, teach kids the things that um, you guys are learning through but in, but in bite-sized chunks that kids can understand and digest. So that's what I really love. But I also understand it needs to be backed by parents as well. So this is what we're covering today. How to parent a mind fit kid. And a mind fit kid is a kid that knows who they are and they're whatever shape, fame or size. Yeah, <laughs> practice what I preach. Well, you know, people can see look through BS, can't you? You can see when somebody's telling you to something and that's in fact one of my main tips that I'm gonna run through, BS parenting. So that's my last tip and it's my favorite tip. But hang on, I can't, I, I can't read your things I've got, to, otherwise I won't stay focused on what I've, got to, what I've got to say. So a mind fit kid is a child that knows who they are what they stand for, and they have the confidence to stand in their power and make clear decisions. So they will be less affected, all kids are affected by peer pressure, but less affected or able to realise negative peer pressure. Oh, thanks for all the hearts and all the loves. Negative peer pressure, and they'll be able to spot it for what it is and make clear decisions after that. And it's because decision making is so important. And when children are at home, we have them in our bubble, especially in this COVID-19 lately, um, that we decide exactly what they do, what they eat, when they get up, when they go to bed, when they get dressed, what they, everything, what they watch on telly, we decide it. But when our children grow up to then leave the nest, they need to be able to, they need to be able to make their own decisions. And I believe that, this is another one of my tips in there is over parenting, is that we don't teach our children how to make good decisions. And so that is um, one of the, yeah, this, is, uh, yeah, that is one of my, um, one of the main uh, streams through uh, the MindFit Kids Academy, which is what I love. But, okay, so, toolkit into creating, brilliant, uh, creating resilient kids. Every single child is different. Every single adult is different. Every single human is different. So there is not a one mold fits all, okay? I just wanting to tell you guys this to start with because these are guidelines, these are ideas, these are um, tips and tools that you can pop in your pocket and use when you need to, but they are not, you must do this, okay? So just always approach anything with an open mind. This is what I'm doing and it's working for me. This is what a lot of other parents within my community here are doing and it's working for them too, but every single child is different. So it's like a, you know, a smorgasbord. Take what you want, use what you can. That's what intelligent parents do, okay? You guys are all that because you're all aware, you're all self-aware, you all understand the, the importance of your own self-awareness and so, you need to be aware about the way you parent because, oh my God, it's the most important thing we do in the world. It really is. I truly believe that as parents, it is our, yeah, absolutely, don't compare. That's it. That's the answer. Right. So tip tool, tip number one I have got. Um, there's eight of them, but I'm going to delve deeply into four. The first one is good nutrition. So... I'm not going to harp into here and I'm not going to get technical and scientific, but it is backed by science. And test it yourself if you haven't. You probably already have. But poor food affects our kids more than we know. 
It affects the way their mind works, definitely affects their body, but it affects the way their mind works as well. So poor food, meaning, and you can get as technical as you like, or you can just keep it as simple as, and I love things simple. Stuff that is in bottles, jars, packets. If they're in a bottle, jar, or packet, I use it very, very sparingly. If it comes out of the ground, or if it's in the freezer, or if it's fresh, that's what I use, and just chop it up and cook it. See, it's as simple as that, because Children cannot think properly if they are hungry. They cannot make clear decisions if they are high on sugar. They can, sugar's a big one, in fact. And because of, you know, the replacing food, uh, sugar for fat and all the rest of it and da 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 But the amount of sugar in processed foods is like, it's bonkers. So sauces and packets and, you know, M&Ms and tiny teddies and packets of shapes and, all those things that are very, very easy and they're cheap now. So we, when we were kids, they weren't cheap. So mum and dad didn't buy them because they were not cost effective. But now they are because they can, pro, you know, whatever they are. They just are. And we can get packets and bottles and jars and processes and, and flip lids and dips and, and the whole lot of it. It's a special treat. It's not a staple diet. And so if you, the first thing I go to if I'm having trouble with a child is are they eating properly it's the first thing i have when i'm like when i'm running yeah yeah that's right overhaul of diet and their better behavior definitely absolutely absolutely why do they run breakfast clubs in um, low socioeconomic area schools because kids need to eat they need to have food in their tummy but not just shit food they need good food i don't know if i'm allowed to swear on here but i sometimes do that but shit food is bad for your kids and their little brains are their neuro you know they're working finding neuro pathways they're, they're exploring they're creating the world and if stuff's just blown out of proportion and then sunk really low and then blown out of proportion from the sugar ups and downs and roundabouts and all the other um they don't even know half the numbers that are in our food and what the effects of them are so just look at your diet and you know like most of you guys on here, because you're so self-aware as well, that, you know, most of you guys, in fact, well, I'm aware, and I would like to think I'm a good parent with what I cook for my children, but sometimes I can get busy. And as I'm going through the supermarket aisle, I can grab too much rubbish, just, and I find I'm looking, and, oh my God, if it's not in the cupboard, I won't use it. So don't buy it in the cupboard, don't put it in the cupboard. Fill it up with fresh stuff, just chop it, Freeze it, just wash it, chop it, chuck it in and let the kids eat a proper carrot instead of, or eat an apple instead of a roll up or, you know, just those things. So if I don't buy it, then I don't use it. That's tool number one. And I think that it is a, a, a well-balanced diet and three main meals a day and snacks in between need to be fruit or veggie. I'm really, really strict on this. My mum was. She was really strict. And we never had a weight problem when we were growing up. So, yeah. I swear away. Thanks, Jelena. <laughs> um, yeah, a well-balanced diet and three main meals a day with fruit or veggie in between needs to maintain your child's mental and physical health. So, yeah, carrots, yes. Yeah. Yeah, love the app Chemical Maze. It's a good reference to what's in products while you're in the supermarket. Oh, my God, that's a good one. Yeah, good one. I don't get that techie. Like, I'm such a uh, gung-ho sort of let's have a crack person and work out the finer details later. And so as rule of thumb, if it's in a bottle or a jar, just leave it. And, and fill your trolley with the good stuff. Right. I don't want to harp on because, you know, like I'm not – I haven't got a lot of time. I can talk for hours. Yep, see? Like I'm 15 minutes in. Right. I've got Q&As at the end. So – the second tool that I'm really wanting to delve deep into, my first tool is good nutrition. My second one is you need to, I'm not going to delve into this one, but the child needs it, all children, especially now, to survive this COVID-19, but not only to survive it, then to thrive on the other side. So you can talk about, people talk about business surviving now and then thriving on the other side if you pivot. It's the same with our children. So they're going to survive this and then thrive when it all opens up or even thrive a little bit in this. My children are thriving in different areas within this COVID-19 because 
um, because of their mindset. So, safe nurturing environment. Children need to know, number one, that you love them, and number two, that they're safe. As long as those two things are, are squared away, and it doesn't matter if you're moving or you're changing or you're moving house or, you know, there's been an uphaul in your family or whatever it is, things are unstable, as long as they know you love them unconditionally and that they are safe, then the rest we can build on. So make sure that's sorted. And I've done a good few lives with this COVID-19, yeah, about this. So make sure you love them and make sure that they're safe. They know that they're safe and it'll all work out and then you can build up from there. But I'm not delving into that tool because the next one I do want to delve into and that is clear boundaries. Tool number three I've got here is clear boundaries. <sighs> this one is a cracker. So clear boundaries. Children feel, I was listening to um, Julian's live yesterday and he was talking about a big strong tree with good deep rooted roots that's grounded, okay? And when something like COVID-19 comes through, it smashes off a few limbs, makes a bit of a mess at the top, but it doesn't topple the whole tree over because their roots are, you know, strong and solid and they're sitting there, yeah? So it's the same with our children. And I believe, and you know, studies prove that clear boundaries are one of the main foundering things that help our children feel stable. Because if our kids know, so there's like just, it's a square, right? Draw a box. That, we can't see it on screen, that. Go for it in there, kids. Just like explore and push as much as you like, but don't step outside those boundaries. And these clear boundaries, you need to work them out with your partner, your life partner, or whoever it is that you work with your children with. You need to work out what these non-negotiables are. And let your children know what they are and let them know that that is where they can go for it. But if they step outside that boundary, then there's repercussions, okay? And you work out what they are for every one of us. Everybody's got their own form of parenting. I'm not gonna teach you how to parent. I'm just giving you some tools. Clear boundaries, so important. And you need to make sure, because your word is your bond, yeah? You say, you do what you say you're going to do. Often when you have children that are struggling, it's when they don't really know. Because kids naturally, human nature is to naturally nudge up against boundaries. I'm always nudging up against them, yeah? All of us are. Anybody that's having a crack at anything is always nudging up against boundaries, okay? We're always pushing our growth edge. But for our children, they need to know that those growth edge, or those boundaries that are non-negotiable, one of mine, Okay, example of them, right? That's the best way. One of mine is my 14 year old now has a phone. Not that impressed about it, but he has a phone. And non-negotiable is 8 p.m. No phones in the bedroom. It's to be plugged in up near the kettle in the kitchen where all of our phones are plugged in and put out. So that is a non-negotiable. And he has, I've been to bed before him a good few times actually in COVID-19. I go to bed early and I get up early. That's just because of the way I work. But um, he hasn't done it a couple of times and the phone's been taken off him and I've been super angry because I trust them that that is a non-negotiable. Another one, um, well, it's just a funny one. It's with my little kids is, you know, when my kids were little and non-negotiables, you don't hit mum. That's one of, you know, with your little tots, okay? So there, there's two examples that they just don't hit mum. Not even in joke, not even in play. Sometimes dad lets them, you know, muck around because boys do that, they rumble and tumble and hit. But mum's out of bounds, don't hit mum. She doesn't like it, I don't agree with it, and that is the boundary, it's a non-negotiable. Um, one of my nieces and nephews, in fact, a good few of them love to bite. That's a non-negotiable, you know, when kids go through that. In fact, there's some been some crackers like, like drawn blood, the whole deal. Because we come from a really big family and there's loads of kids and it's really crazy when we have Christmas and, well, Easter wasn't, this last Easter wasn't, but. So that's another non-negotiable. So work out what your non-negotiables are and stick to them. You, your child will feel safe and secure. I've written notes here because I want to get it on for you guys. You will feel safe and secure if boundaries are, if non-negotiables, so they can explore as much as they like within, your child will feel safe and secure. Okay, they'll feel like that tree with the deep rooted roots that's not gonna topple over. They have got, they're grounded. 
That's where the grounded part comes from. And it's from clear boundaries. They know what is expected of them and they know what is not. And don't keep changing them. Yeah? There's some that are black and white and they need to stay black and white. And I understand there's some that are in between. But those non-negotiables, they're clear boundaries. You need to work them out. Have a proper think about them. And think about, you, like, they've got to be in alignment with your values, okay? Um, work out your boundaries, non-negotiables, let your children know them and stick to them. Rule of thumb for that one is if you say you're going to do something, do it. Your word is your bond. Mum used to say that. So if you promise an ice cream, you have to give an ice cream. If you promise no television that night for X, Y, and Z, no television that night for X, Y, and Z. Yeah, same deal. So, yeah, it makes sense. And kids can make sense of it too. Absolutely, absolutely. But, you know, so just speaking from experience, I think that I do have good clear boundaries, but I catch myself on it because we get busy, we get, we're flat out doing, living, everything else. You know, like our children are uh, the main center of our universe, but, but they're not everything all the time. And sometimes my boundaries get blurred, especially when our children hit those teenage years and they question everything, which is human nature, okay? So don't knock them down for that, but they question everything. And they are becoming to, like you want them to be independent children, to have a mind to think on their own, and they start questioning you. And then you start questioning you. You go, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who's the parent here? Clear boundaries. Get them sorted. It'll, it'll do, do yourself a favor, do your partner a favor, do your children a favor. Get really clear on those non-negotiables and don't move them for hell or, hell or high water. Is that the saying? <laughs> I need a drink because I'm just... Um, Oh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, good, Rihanna. Yeah, I totally agree. Clear boundaries. Yeah, one of yours too, Katrina. Don't hit mum. Yeah, it's a non-negotiable. It doesn't even need to be. And like, dad likes it. Dad also likes him jumping all over him in bed, but mum doesn't. Mum just doesn't like it. So, um, you know, there's some of them. Um, another one is if they don't eat all their veggies... And this is, a, this is one that some people have, like I have loads of debates with this one. If they don't eat everything on their plate and I serve them up a small amount and they can always add more, then if they can't finish their dinner, then they can't have sweets because their tummy's full and so they don't need anything else. Um, anyway, lots of people have lots of views on that, but that's a non-negotiable of mine in my family. I don't know. That's, some people think that creates eating disorders and, you know, there's loads of teching, but that's a non-negotiable for me. If they can't fit their proper food in, then they can't have their, you know, their ice cream or their, because we have sweets at night time as well. So usually homemade. In fact, lots of homemade stuff now with COVID-19, rice pudding and um, apple tarts and stuff. All right, number four, I'm not gonna get into this one too deeply, but I could do a full session on this. It's uh, plenty of play. Children need to play off devices. Knew I was gonna say that, didn't you guys? Yeah. So my tool number four is plenty of play off, de off devices. That is my, um, so the element of play is so important for kids. And any of you guys that are teachers, in fact, I know Shelly, you are. In fact, you were one of my teachers when I was a little girl. In fact, my favorite teacher <laughs> uh, is so important to develop children's skin skills for their developmental skills, yeah. And um, it's where they learn to work out to work with others, they learn to communicate, they learn to role play. Uh, please do not rob your children of playtime, off devices. Yeah, please don't rob them by letting them at lib hop on devices. I know it's been really, really tricky and my kids have had more to do with devices lately than, um, you know, than they ever have with COVID-19 and like we've got area and property. so. God forbid anybody in a smaller area, but it's, oh yeah, right, Katrina, you're a teacher as well. Fabulous. Speaking to the converted. So, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Shelley. So, um, please don't rob your children of their playtime. So, okay, now I, I'm not delving into this one, but I have to tell you this because my sister did it and it was like a, her children are like a scientific experiment. 
in COVID-19. You know, some of the bonuses from this COVID-19 are just phenomenal, aren't they? Because um, it's given her the time and space. And so she did it. She has five kids, Tracy, right? She's the juggling mum. She, she blogs on it. And she's epic, Tracy. She works. She's got five kids and she plays for Australia as well. But, you know, it's crazy. But she let her kids, her five, her eldest is, Madeline is nine and a half. And the youngest, a set of twins, are three. So there's five kids in between that, okay? She let her kids at lib for a full day, whatever they wanted. iPad, they can't touch a phone because she works on it. Uh, television, movies, dad's iPad, dad's phone, let them just go for it. Whatever they wanted, as long as they liked. Because you can do this in, in COVID-19, right? They're like a scientific experiment. She didn't change their food, she didn't change their sleep, she didn't change anything. She just let them go for it. They could come in, they could go out, they could play, or they can, or they can play on the iPads or whatever they like. Her kids are good kids, yeah? Because she, she's quite a good parent, a very good parent. Her kids were revolting by the end of the day. Absolutely revolting. Bag of rats. They were disgusting to each other. They spoke badly to each other. They thought badly about themselves. They wouldn't eat dinner properly. They wouldn't, go, they wouldn't go to bed. They wouldn't sleep. She said it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. So then the next day, there was no devices, not one single, not even um, television after bed or like television in the evenings, you know, for a sit down half an hour to watch her kids. There was nothing, no devices. And her kids were back to normal. In fact, they were lovely. Because they create, you know, so that is the power in it, okay? That is the power in devices. And I'm not even getting that deep into it. I just wanted to tell you about that because Tracy was just telling me the other day um, about her five children. And she said they were disgusting. She just wanted to, I'm not telling you what she wanted to do to them because I, I know you can all relate, but you, I'll just let you think about that one. So that was the off devices thing. So tool number five, how am I going for time, you guys? 10 o'clock, right, cool, not too bad, not too bad. Okay, tool number five is, I'm not going into this one too much either, but it's over-parenting. So in today's world, in our Western world, we often over-parent. <laughs> yeah, pretend play too. Do you know, sorry, I'm just, I keep pop seeing these pop up. Yeah, coronavirus has definitely made it harder. It's tough, but it's worth it. And I love it that my kids love books and starting to get old enough for pretend play too. Yeah. Do you know, pretend play, so my 14-year-old is, you know, he's pretty cool. And he's like, he's as tall as me now. He's really big. Like I'm six foot. He's just nearly six foot as well. And he's very grown up and he's quite manly. He's quite mature. But he's been pretend playing still with my little boys. And I love it. I just love it. Love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. You are never too old to have fun and play. And when you see your 14-year-old because of COVID-19 at home, not being negatively influenced by peer pressure and it's so cool and, you know, I don't play like that, you know, because it's not cool. He's here at home and he's been really involving himself with the rest of the family in a, yeah, it's just beautiful. I'm really proud of it. Well, it's not actually me, it's him, but I'm really Thankful, I'm grateful for COVID for that, that one particular thing, actually. Okay, overparent. That's what I was going on about. This is why I need to keep on track or else I just keep talking. Okay, in today's Western world, we are often overparent. It's what society, media, and advertising has portrayed as the right way to parent. We actually need to let our children fail. We actually do. We need to let them fail sometimes to learn their mistakes and understand that. And one of the things that my kids have, and I remind them all the time, particularly my second boy, um, is that mistakes are okay. That's how we learn. Yeah? And as long as your children aren't going to hurt themselves or hurt somebody else, they need to know that it is... Mistakes are okay and it helps them learn. Yeah, that's a good one, Elisa. Notice that free play on their own is teaching them individually and they, yeah, yeah, it totally does. It opens up. So, you know, as a business owner, like some of you guys run your own businesses, I know, and, um, you know, you need to be imaginative. So if we shut that part down, you know, our, it stifles our whole creativity and society is making kids do that because they're going to watch the thing and they follow the rules and follow. So without, you know, they do need to conform. I know we all, we can't all just be like, 
hippies, but we need to, yeah, definitely let our kids free play. That's how they learn. But overparenting is what I was talking about is, yeah, this is that decision making thing. So when we overparent, and this is a bone of contention, we could talk about this forever as well, because what is the line? There is no line. It is for you individually to work it out for yourself. It really is. That's why they're your children. Because, but I do know when I see, and I do it myself as well, overparenting is easier because if you just do it, then it gets done and it gets done properly. And there's no mistakes and no bruised knees and no cut fingers and burnt hands and, <laughs> and the rest of it. But we can't do that because our kids need to learn how to make decisions. And the way they do that is by making mistakes. And the best way for them to make mistakes is under our watchful eye, that they're not serious mistakes. So I'm talking about our middle kids and our little kids here. And then even with our, our teens, um, they need to be able to make mistakes. They need to, if you are doing all their homework for them, still you're over-parenting. They need to be able to fail if they're not stepping up to the plate and putting their own time in. Yeah, and get the repercussions for that. They need to, because no, you're not going to go to work for them, are you? That's an example, you see. So this is an example, like I'm talking to you guys about real life examples from me and my family, my husband and I and our four boys. Always one of four boys. Grew up with four girls and now I have four boys. I feel truly blessed. Right. There you go, not going too badly. Not going too badly. Right, okay, tool number six, mind fitness. I'm gonna tell you about that. Now this could, I could just keep going on this one. Mind fitness is a play on words. And the reason that I've used mind fitness is because I have looked at lots and lots and lots of parenting and lots and lots and lots of mindfulness, um, children programs for kids to be you know more aware more more spiritual I suppose and they are a little bit woo-woo for me I am woo-woo but I think that now I've got to be careful the way I go this about this because it can upset a lot of people but there's a lot of fluff out there there's a lot of fluff and a lot of rainbows and sparkles and an unrealistic view of mindfulness and that's why I've called it mind fitness and life because to get a to get anywhere in life we need to be resilient and resilience doesn't always look wonderful yeah and so our kids need to and to that's why I talk about parenting mind fit kids because to have a strong fit, flexible body is what everybody talks about, what everybody puts money into. You see all the gyms around, all the online, you know, fitness programs, everybody's talking about food and weight and flexibility and they are important. A strong, fit, flexible body is important. But I believe that a strong, fit, flexible mind is as important or even more. Because our mind is what creates the rest of our existence. Our body is just a vessel that we are in and our mind decides whether we put that into our mouth, or whether we go to the gym, whether we go for that run. Our mind is the deciding of the whole thing. It's, it's what runs everything. And a strong, fit, flexible mind if we can arm our kids with the tools and weave it into their day in a daily practice that is doable, teachable, digestible, and yeah, thanks, thanks for the 100%, yeah, cool. Digestible and usable and backed by science, not just airy fairy fluffy stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Resilience is the key to becoming a major a major key to becoming a happy, healthy adult. Absolutely, resilience is key. Gratitude, resilience, and empathy. So, 
a mind fit child and it's not just meditation it's not just affirmations it's not just vision boards it's not just it's not one of any of those things it's all of those things pleasure 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 Hayley oh, nice to see you nice to see you mind fit yeah that's how I write it mind fit kids Academy and mind fit parents is really my next one but mind fit kids so a mind fit kid a, a strong fit healthy mind will build an extremely resilient child a mind fit child is flexible to their approach to life Okay, what we teach is keep your goals in concrete, but keep your approach flexible. Okay, because resilience in the past, the way I thought it was, was to be strong and hard and steadfast and everything slides off, nothing sticks, you know. This is my thought, old thought of resilience and it got me so far. And this was my mum's thought of resilience, okay, and then she got sick and she's passed away now because she's been through something but she's one hell of a resilient woman but this was the idea of resilience and this has changed now resilience in actual fact is the ability to take the hits because life does that shit happens it does shit happens and knocks us down but it's being able to improvise adapt reset pivot and jump back up and have another crack that is what true resilience is and so to teach our children to do that is, or give our children the opportunity to then use it if they choose to. That's actually really what we're doing. We can't live our child's life for us. That would be overparenting. But to give our children the ability or the tools. See, I wish I had had those tools when I was as young as eight, when dad died. I wished I had had those tools. It wasn't until I got a little taste of it at the Australian Institute of Sport at 13, and then I delved into it about 16, and then when suicide hit again at 21, I got right into it. Um, and so, yeah, mind fit kids. This is why I'm so passionate about it. This is why it like, comes out of my eyes and my ears, and I talk so fast and I keep talking. So mind fit kids. A mind fit kid, okay, if, you, if your child has a deep level of un understanding on how their mind operates, okay, backed by science, because neuroscience in the last 18 months has come so far. We, we've learned more about the way the brain works in the last 18 months than we have known in the last 18 years. So, and if you can teach your children, if you can learn yourself, and then teach your children exactly how the mind works. And then use that to your advantage, whether you choose to or not, because everything's a choice. Wouldn't that benefit us and our children? I, I truly believe it is. And that is why the whole Mind Fit Kids Academy has come together. So if your child has a deep level of understanding on how their mind operates and how they can use that to this advantage, to their advantage, then they will build incredible self-confidence. It's like a ship, right? If you're standing on a boat, okay, you're in, the, in an ocean. You're standing on a boat and the waves are rocking and you can't make clear decisions because you're in an insta instable space, okay? Your mind is not fit. It is strong and it is steadfast. And if stuff rocks, you fall off the boat or you break a leg or you fall in the water, okay, and you die, okay? Or not, or you half drown, or, or whatever it is, okay? You fall off the boat. But if you are strong and fit and flexible, if you have a fit mind, if, you have, if your mind is fit, as that boat rocks, you improvise and adapt and sway with it and you stay on the boat and you stay with your head above water or even more, okay? So you can survive now and thrive after or thrive now too. Choice is yours. So, or your child's. Okay, so that's what mind fitness is to me. And that is what incredible self-confidence and they're flexible with their approach to any problems that might arise. Because in a lot of the parenting courses or kids courses that I've seen, they talk about the good stuff, but they don't talk about the bad stuff. Okay, and it's unrealistic. It's fluffy and it's BS. Because... It's great to talk about when it's good, but when it's not good is actually when the sticks are down, that is when your true character rises, isn't it? And your inner values step up, you know, stand out, step up, stand out, make a difference. 
a good start. This is a good start to mind fitness. Okay, right. Okay, all right. Mind fitness. I'm going to cut that off, or I'm just going to keep talking about it because um, awesome. Cool. No, I'm not too bad. Okay, last one because I need to give you guys a bit of quick Q and A. Tool number seven, and it's the best one. It's about bullshit parenting. Lead by example. Tool number seven is lead by example. This is by far the most important parenting tool I can give you. And it's my favorite for building resilient children. So if you show your child how to pivot, if you show them instead of tell them how to pivot, how to improvise, how to adapt and how to overcome and how to bounce back to achieve your goals and dreams, then your child or children or any of the other children that are watching you, not even just parents, will do the same. There is nothing more powerful than walking your talk. And like my children, honestly, I can't see what they think of me because it's harder to do, but I can see that they think that their dad is their world, okay? He's their God. He really is. Like he is a huge, he's a great dad. But I think, yeah, monkey see, monkey do. Absolutely. I love the way my kids copy him because I love the way they copy the stuff that I think is good about him. <laughs> Uh, but that's what they do. They honestly, our children think, our, monkey see, monkey do. That's exactly it. And if you tell your child to do something, that this is the way they should do it, and you're not doing it yourself, that's just bullshit. It just is. It's plain and simple. It's just BS. If you, example is, you tell your children they're not allowed their devices or, or they're not allowed their devices in bed and you're in bed, that's just BS, okay? You can't tell your children to do something and not be doing it yourself. If you tell your children that you need to, you know, eat X, Y, and Z and you're eating A, B, and C, if you tell your children not to text while you're driving, you know, our children do what they see a lot more powerful than what they're told. You think about when you're a child. Don't smoke. It's bad for you. You know, like it's, um, it, it is so powerful. And so one of my main driving forces to get up and get my face in front of these things, because I'm not, I'm actually quite a, quite a shy person, is because I'm so passionate about it and I wanted to lead by example. So my children are quite, my eldest is very, very talented in football. And if I am going to tell him that he can and that he, you know, off you go, Dale, you can achieve anything, you know, make a big difference, off you go, chase your dreams. And I'm not chasing mine. That is just BS, isn't it? It's absolute BS. And so that's what got me out of my own way a good few, a couple of years ago, to get started on this whole journey. A journey that I've been on for a long time, but really getting it out in front of people on Facebook because I'm not, I didn't even know what Facebook was a little while ago. So that is an example of BS parenting. Lead by example. It's so powerful. It is so, so powerful. So powerful. And you know, even if you don't have your own children, if you've got nieces and nephews, you can impact them just by leading by example. You don't even need to lecture them and tell them what to do. They just watch you, follow you, and if they love it, then off they go. And that is how we create our champions. There's one bonus tip at the end, last tool. It's a bonus tool. And it's a cool tool. I'm gonna to say it to you guys just quickly, is have fun with your kids. Life is too short. We take life too seriously. We really do. And the pressure society puts on us to conform uh, and all that we put on ourselves, we often we take life too seriously. Uh, think back to when you were a child and see the situation through that lens, just for a little while, and play with your kids. You know, I know we're all busy. COVID-19 has opened up that space for us though, hasn't it? It's a blessing, it's a true blessing. If you look at it that way, it's all a choice. But uh, if you understand, you'll help you understand your child's world a bit better and build closer connections with them. So rule of thumb, laugh at yourself. You're allowed to make mistakes, they're okay. It's how we learn, it takes the pressure off. You and everybody else and makes life fun. So they are in a nutshell, 
four I went into kind of deeply and four I just brushed over, but they are my tools um, that I'm using myself and lots of other mums as well. Mums and dads are using. Have you guys got, give me, I think I've sort of had a look through what, uh, yeah, our, choose, our children, Katrina, I could not agree more. Our children are our gift, so don't waste that gift, absolutely. Even when you want to bang their heads together, they are still our gift. Yeah, so, you know, like, because we're all human, okay? Don't, we're not all perfect parents all the time. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, we're not all perfect parents all the time. We are all human, okay? And so take the pressure off yourself a bit. Don't live up to expectations. There is no perfect parent. You're welcome, Angela. You're very, very welcome. Thanks so much for coming in. There's no perfect parent. So don't try to be one. Just, we all do the best with what we know at the present point. I just like to have a little guideline, because I like that, to make sure. And when things aren't working the way they should, I just go back to them, those tools there, really. That's what I go back to. And just make sure, this need a little shimmy, that need a little shimmy. No, I'm doing this one okay. Maybe I need a bit more on that one. I'm doing a great job on that one. I reckon, so there's no handbook for parenting, because everybody's different. But they're just some guidelines that I have really, yeah, proudly put together for you guys here today. I'm looking forward to, I really love this uh, happiness aid. I really love it. Um, and I'm actually going to present again next Friday. I have been lucky enough to have another spot this time next week. And I'm actually going to delve into module one of my online course, really, which is Mind Mastery but I'm gonna take it from the parent's perspective. So within my um, course, it is for children, but it's important for, for our parents to understand it as well. And when I was listening to Julian's live the other day, when he's talking about fear, and um, I, I've got a lot to give and I would love to give it to you guys. So I'm gonna delve into mind mastery, which is, oh, I can talk underwater anyway. And I'll probably talk as fast as I am, I can, and get in as much as I can with that. So. I am, yeah, thanks, Danielle. Any questions you guys got? Because I think I've got a little bit more time. No, I'm over time. Loads of love to you guys. Yeah, my pleasure, my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I think a rising tide, I think we need some more positive, always more. It'll always... You know, bad news always sells faster than good and to try to get anything out in the media these days is crazy unless it is something negative. But um, if we all of us trying to speak the same message band together and that's how it works. Rising tide lifts all shifts. Ships. See, I'm now even talking double Dutch. Loads, loves, loads of love to you guys before I just... I can't even talk anymore. I was talking too fast. Thanks so much, you guys. Loads and loads and loads of love. Ciao. Ciao for now.